Welcome back to another tutorial in Cinema 4D. Uh, this time we are going to be talking about Cinema 4D and V-Ray. Um, I've been doing a lot of learning in this, but I'm still fairly new to it. Um, so let's just jump right in. Um, you saw a snapshot of the image that we're going to try to simulate or create. Um, I am using Cinema 4D R20, and I already have the V-Ray uh, V-Ray 3.7 installed so I've already got bridge and it's already showing up as my renderer um, here uh, one error that I noticed I'm having that I still haven't gotten any feedback on is the fact that my VFB window is not working so if you're not familiar the visual uh, frame buffer window is a great way to render um, images in your uh, perspective view through your camera into your picture viewer but then you can do color correction adjustments and a whole bunch of uh, different adjustments right there as opposed to having to export it into Photoshop. But for some reason, I don't have that ability. So this will be um, this will also include us going into Photoshop to do some post-production if that's something that you want to do. Um, taking a look at our scene, all I've used is a lot of the um, included assets inside of um, inside of Cinema 4D. So inside of content browser um, you've got all these things under uh, the uh, under visualize um, so if you come in here if you download the all the extra information that comes with cinema 4d you'll get access to all these things um, so I've just going under buildings I'm just using a house that I found in here that I kind of liked um, just to kind of make like a like a pool house feel for this scene and then the other thing to keep in mind is you're going to have to make all of your own um, materials uh, under under create. We're going to have to go to the V-Ray bridge and use different combinations of these materials that v, um, for V-Ray. You can use standard um, materials and under V-Ray bridge you can go to convert uh, materials that you already have but sometimes that doesn't do a great job. So. Um, I recommend you just kind of get comfortable uh, learning how to make different materials and I haven't done a great job of this there's a lot of different things that I would um, I'm gonna do in the future but um, let's just go ahead and jump into a new scene uh, but I just want to show you how this is set up um, but we're just gonna talk about the lighting aspect of it so let's just go starting from scratch let's go new scene and let's just take a very basic house and let's put it uh, in here with just a floor. And then we're going to make sure, as I said before, we're using the V-Ray bridge. Um, and you can click on VFB window if you've got a, a Windows machine, but for some reason it's not working for me. Um, I'm going to use sampler type bucket. And just to preview a little bit quicker, I'm going to turn my threshold down to 0.03. That's just going to make my rendering time a little bit better. Um, I like to use for the um, sampler, um, I'm going to keep that all the same. Under color mapping, I'm going to use exponential. And we're just going to leave that as is for now. Um, we're going to come back to our scene and let's go ahead and bring in a V ray camera. And let's find a position that we're going to want to render in somewhere right here. And then I'm going to add a tag that's just going to be a protection. So that way when I'm in the camera view, if I try to move around, it's not going to allow me to do that. So I'll have to jump out of the camera to do any moves. Um, so we'll leave that as is. And then what we need to do also um, is, in this case, uh, we're just going to do a basic sky. So we're going to do V-Ray Sun and Sky. And let's jump back into our camera. Now starting with camera settings, we've got all these lens parameters down here, um, if you can see these. Um, the zoom factor, um, if you want to go with like a wider angle, you can actually pull this out. It's not going to show you a live view in the perspective here, but um, it's going to widen your view. So it's really nice for doing interiors by changing your zoom factor. Um, and then you can add all kinds of different uh, effects. You can uh, Shift your lens, shift your camera over, um, do all sorts of things like that, and 
adjust your white balance if that's something that you want to uh, for post-production purposes if you want to adjust the white balance uh, make it warmer or cooler you can do that or you can do that in post um, and the case of film ISO I'm gonna just I'm gonna put this up to 200 and I'm gonna lower my f-stop and to counteract that I'm just gonna up my shutter speed to 600 for right now um, going in the to the light settings we've got these common settings which are probably familiar to you for doing basic lighting in cinema 4d um, we have an infinite light and we can affect things such as the shadows and um, photons but we're not going to mess with that a whole lot um, the only thing that we might mess with in here um, is going to be our sky intensity mul multiplier but i'll just do a quick render now and just we'll just kind of take a look and see um, what this is looking like and so as you can see it's extremely bright um, so I'd recommend going in here to the um, camera settings and maybe we are going to go back down to 100 on our ISO and um, up our shutter speed even more at 800 and let's do a quick render so we're starting to get better lighting and you can see it's kind of just a really beautiful uh, lighting in the background there that you get um, but let's go back into our sunlight and let's change the um, sky intensity multiplier um, and we're going to turn that down to 50% and let's do a quick preview and now we can actually start to see our sky a little bit in the background um, and to give you a better view of this let's just go ahead and uh, I'm going to take off the protection tag for right now and move our camera into a position where we're looking up at the sky a little bit more. So something like this. And let's take a look. Okay, so we're starting to get some pretty cool um, lighting effects here. And um, so let's go ahead and let's just add a really reflective material to this building just so you can kind of see how the light's bouncing off that. It's obviously going to up our render time, but um, all we're going to do is we're going to go in here and we're going to create an advanced material. And inside of our specular layer, layer one, we're going to turn that on. You can see immediately we get uh, a bit of reflection here. And the more we want, the more at, we add to this Fresnel IOR, the more clear and defined reflection we're going to get off of this material. Um, the other thing that we can do in our diffuse layer is we can uh, change the warmth, but Obviously, it's only going to do it to one material. So, if you want to add, um, you know, a little bit of a different color sun, a sun effect, we're going to maybe add a little bit more yellow under the filter color inside of our light. And let's take a look at this. Oops, I first need to apply the material. And let's take a quick look. And now we can see we're getting this reflection now off the side kind of looking out into the distance um, and to really see what that looks like we could add another shape sort of out in the distance there and we should be able to get a bounce off of that and you can see just kind of the edge there um, so the light is starting to play around very nicely those are all extra settings that you can add but um, this is a really basic way to just get you set up with a simple um, a simple way to start getting kind of realistic lighting in your outdoor scenes. Um, the other thing that we can do is if we get rid of this existing light and go back into V-Ray Bridge, we can also do what's called a V-Ray Area Dome Light. And the dome light is going to take HDR images, which I will import one of these to kind of give you an example. So if I jump back, in, now I jump into my settings um, I'm not going to mess with the common settings yet until I kind of play with uh, my dome. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click that I'm going to use a texture and I'm going to make a spherical dome. So it kind of wraps the image entirely around my scene um, as opposed to having kind of this horizontal or uh, horizon line which you see if that was unchecked. So that might also work for you. Um, and then we are going to make sure that we find our image so in this case I'm using 
uh, just this day HDR. And then we want to make sure that we have gone in and we've gone to V-Ray Bridge and we've selected that it's an advanced bitmap. So now it's ready to play with um, inside of V-Ray. Um, then we're going to go to V-Ray Bridge and inside the workflow we can use a texture preview. So all I did was um, open this window and clicked preview texture. And now we can start to preview kind of where, what the angle of the sun is. Um, it's kind of indicating to us where the sun is. I'm going to keep it, I'm going to go for like long shadows. So let's go ahead and put this over here. Um, leave that as is. Obviously, this isn't going to do any good as far as your light's concerned. It's only really um, just rotating along the horizon where you can adjust the light, but the, the, the spherical dome is going to stay fixed where it is. Um, and other perspectives, unless you wanted to go in and mess with that, but you don't. Um, and then under, well, let's just do a quick review, uh, preview. Okay, so we've got it uh, now inside of our scene. Um, you'll notice it's really dark to start, so simple way to fix that is just coming now into our common settings. We're gonna bump this up to like something like 20. Let's do another preview. There we go. So now we've got kind of that similar lighting that we had in our previous scene. Um, so that's essentially most of what I did in order to, to preview that. Um, and as an example, if we go back into V-Ray Bridge and we look at our bucket sampler and we up the threshold now, or make that more refined, and now we preview it, now it's going to take a little bit longer, but it's going to give us a little bit better detail. Um, so we're not seeing as much of that noise um, on the edge here. And of course, I'm just doing it um, in the standard render view. But if I do it to picture view, now we render this out and we've got a pretty nice image um, that's pretty similar to the uh, beach house scene that we had um, that I'd shown you before. Um, so if we just kind of jump back into that scene and find our camera, now I'll just show you what this looks like when you actually render the full scene. And it uh, it takes it's going to take a while now to kind of calculate all the geometry that I have in there. I've got a lot of different shapes, a lot of curved shapes, a lot of leaves. Um, but it'll start to build the scene and oops I don't have my light on I turn sometimes I turn my light off because it's hard to see um, so I'll turn that back on and I will do the same thing again and just give you a preview of what this looks like so now it's gonna take a lot longer now that I have my light in here so we're compiling geometry and I'm just going to go ahead and uh, let this render. And um, I hope this gave you a good introduction to kind of using the different types of light that you can use in your scenes for V-Ray inside Cinema 4D. Uh, join us in the next tutorial where we'll kind of go into more depth and making a, a whole scene um, to kind of mimic the scene that we're showing here. Uh, thanks a lot for watching and see you next time.